engages in any form of political violence will certainly face the full wrath of the law. A stern warning to deter any action that might compromise the credibility of impending elections. Zimbabweans are due to elect a new leader, a process everyone hopes won't be marred by the violence of previous polls. Zimbabwe's police service, historically viewed as partisan, has promised to deal with disturbances impartially. The judiciary in liaison with the police and the other stakeholders has set up special courts throughout the country to speedily and expeditiously deal with politically motivated crimes. On the other hand, the Commissioner General of Police has set up teams of experienced investigators in the provinces to expedite the investigation and compilation of dockets for prosecution. Its new stance has been roundly welcomed by political parties, stakeholders and prospective voters who believe their country can now turn a new democratic page. If the law says there should be no violence, then we should observe that. There should be no manipulation of the results. I've seen the parties campaigning freely and they're getting coverage on national media. So this is going to be a truly free and fair election. A new biometric voter's role and equal access to state media are among reforms being implemented to ensure a free and fair election. Members of parliament are expected to fast track the alignment of electoral laws to the constitution when they resume sitting in May. We would also expect that um, uh, you know, there will be an enabling environment to allow uh, observers, especially local observers, who usually cover the length and breadth of, 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 the, of the country to be able to do their work without any intimidation, without any fear, um, without any interference in the way, manner in which they do their work. International election observers, including previously barred missions from the United States, EU and Commonwealth, have been invited to monitor the polls, which are viewed as key to cementing Zimbabwe's re-engagement with the international community after years of isolation. Farai Mwakutuya, CGTN, Harare, Zimbabwe.